Hola, soy Sebastián de EO Spain y estáis viendo EO TV. Welcome to EO TV. I'm Andrea Collins. And I'm Randall Mauricio. This is your weekly entrepreneurs organization webcast. You know, Randall, the best thing about EO TV is it's driven by members for members, sharing information to better yourself and your business. Yeah, and that being said, EO chairman elect Matt Stewart has some great advice for improving on the SWAT method. The what method? I'll, uh, I'll tell you about that later on in the show, Andrea. All right, let's get to it. One of the most common areas that business owners look to for cost savings when things get tough is marketing. But as EO Melbourne member Melissa Smith recently told the Gold Coast Bulletin, that can be a costly mistake. Melissa owns two marketing consulting firms and cautions entrepreneurs that out of sight often means out of mind. Even though it can be tempting, pulling your marketing and advertising budget may mean that customers will flock to those companies they're still hearing about and you'll lose a market share. So how do you get the word out with fewer dollars? Turn to your website. Melissa says that the focus now is on using websites as a marketing tool to drive leads, brand the company, and show online testimonials. So what can you do? Keep your website current. Search engines crawl regularly updated websites more frequently. Optimize your site for search engines. Make sure to search for the terms that you want your customers to find you under. If your pages aren't pulling up, put those terms in links, copy and page titles on your website. Try paid search advertising. Paid search advertising is one of the most budget-friendly advertising models out there. Google AdWords, for example, allows you to specify to the dollar how much you want to spend each day. Follow these tips and you can increase your Googliness while keeping your marketing expenditures in control. Well, you've probably heard of SWOT analysis, the process of identifying strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats facing your business. EO's chairman-elect Matt Stewart has taken SWOT to a new level at his company, National Services Group. And of course, he's sharing his tactics with us today. Each quarter, Matt's partners send him their SWOT analysis on their business, which they present to their board. Then at Matt's quarterly company meeting, the division heads break into groups of five to hash out the analysis in 10 minutes of presentation and 20 minutes of questions and feedback from the other group members. But the analysis doesn't stop there. Anyone Matt works with directly uses SWOT as a personal development tool. Each quarter, Matt will conduct a SWOT analysis on anyone he works with, and in turn, those individuals will conduct a SWOT analysis on Matt. At quarterly meetings, the team discusses these personal SWATs and creates business and personal action plans for the upcoming quarter. Everyone has a plan with metrics to improve the company and themselves as leaders. The result is open communication about strengths and weaknesses throughout Matt's company, as well as clarity on threats and opportunities. Everyone works as a team to improve the company and improve the executives in the company as well. The practice has been so successful that most of the company follows this system in their personal and work lives. In this week's Spotlight, Tim Danley found himself in a slow growth marketplace and in order to grow, turned to acquisitions to help fuel efficiencies, growth and profitability. I'm Tim Danley uh, from the Des Moines, Iowa chapter of EO. And uh, I have a business called BCT Midwest, and we are a wholesale commercial printer. My business is, uh, uh, basically does commercial, full-service commercial printing for uh, print resellers, uh, print brokers, anyone that uh, resells printing of any kind uh, to the public. Uh, we don't deal with the public. Uh, we're only dealing with uh, someone that is reselling. Um, one of the things that uh, has really helped us in our business is uh, acquisitions. Uh, we were we were forced uh, we we found ourselves in a, a small market like Des Moines, Iowa, and uh, if we wanted to grow, we needed to find bigger markets, and so that led us to uh, acquire uh, other markets in in our in our business, and uh, that has been a, a big part of our success because it's allowed us to scale our operations and uh, make us more profitable, make us more. Uh, 
uh, do more volume so we can get better pricing and so forth. And without acquiring other territories, we, uh, we wouldn't have been able to do that. In this tip of the week, Yua Hedrick Wong, economic advisor for MasterCard Worldwide, tells us that if we really want innovative products and services, we need to play with the future buyers. Now, your tip of the week is that if you really want to understand where innovation and innovative products is going to come from, among the younger consumers, go out and play with them. See how they behave. See what they're not happy with, with the existing products and services. Mountain bike came from the young cyclists, unhappy with the bikes that they had. They couldn't take them off road. They invented the mountain bike. And if you were a bicycle manufacturer 30 years ago, out there playing with young cyclists, you would have been the first one to invent and produce mountain bike, a whole new product, a whole new category. This is you, Hedrick Wong. This is your tip of the week. Well, thanks again to Matt Stewart for our story on the SWAT method. And as always, we appreciate any stories any of you may have to share. Just make sure you send us an email at eotv at eonetwork.org. We'll see you next time. And remember, the harder the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. <laughs> see you <laughs> next time.